vanity of night, brushed with lacquer of crimson, black soul bursts through blood. Screens of masonite, hands creating patina, age through art, not time. Shtick flies, varnish dries. How two genres stood on head, two jerks with some tools. in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's, it's the Full Spot Cam. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Furniture on Demand. I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorario. And we're going to be doing what will come to be known as the Boudoir Show. In history, the annals of history will go down as the Boudoir Show. We're going to be working on these lovely old screens back here. Dividing screens. Dividing screens. And Dividing and conquering screens. This lovely vanity. We have a vanity. We have a matching bench that has a nice rip in the upholstery, and it has a lovely mirror. The mirror is not here. They know but, that. But you'll see it in the end. And we're going to be doing it in a process known as Nagoro Nori. Nagoro Nori Which is, is a kind of lacquer. Well, it's a faux lacquer. It has the look of lacquer, but it's not really a lacquer because it's hard to duplicate a real lacquer like the monks did. Now, true oriental lacquering, as it's called, uh, consists of 40 or 50 brushed strokes, uh, brushed coats with many strokes, all sanded in between, the final rub out done with oils and powders That's right. held between the finger and palm. Mm -hmm. Well, they would just rub it. They sprinkle the oil on and they would just rub with their hands. They didn't use blocks. Now they do, but back in the, in the days of the monks in Nagoro Nori or Nagoro Dira. Which, which is, is the name of the monastery where Nagoro Nori was first done. That's right. It was, called, it was used by the monks. Uh, I guess just because they had to uh, use up a lot of free time, they would take their dinner bowl, and usually wooden bowls. Sit on a rock. Sit on a rock and begin the process of doing this lacquer. And they would use real lacquer that came from the lac tree. And uh, they would brush the lacquer on or use their hand in applying it. And they would put a black on and then cover that with a red. And in the process of rubbing it out, they would rub through the red and expose the black. Or maybe they would put a red on the base and a black on the top. Sometimes it's used, they even used yellow. Uh, so we're going to use a black and a red. Now today, lacquer is very often sprayed on in spray booths, such as you see here. That's right, and the guns are propelled by compressed air. You pop the hose onto the end of the gun, you load the gun, you adjust the nozzle, you can spray on in a wide fan like this, or a very narrow cone-like fan to get details and edges. Uh, and by t in today's standards, the furniture industry, I guess a lacquer finish would consist anywhere from 7 to maybe 10, 12, 15 coats at the most. But some of the furniture that comes over from uh, Italy, especially the real thick half-inch lacquer finish, a lot of that is flowed on. They have flow bins and flow, char flow uh, uh, conveyor belts. I have an and flow. But we have <laughs> no flow bins, we have no, no we spray don't. booths, and we have no patience of a monk. Well, so I do. You do? I do. Well, go have good. I'm, I'll meet you when, I'm you're done chant your, later. when you're done your chanting. But uh, we're going to use regular oil paints that we're going to make. We're going to make our own black paint and our own red paint, and we're going to use clear varnishes, and we're going to duplicate the lacquer look called Nagoro Nori. Hey, you. Now, before... No, I was just working up a rhythm there. Now. Before we start painting or mixing our paint, there's a three-step cleaning down process. First is sanding. I'm sanding with 100 grit... Garnet paper. See, it says garnet paper. This is what you want to use. The finish on here is a shellac finish, and you, what I'm doing is sanding it down. There's no bubbling, there's no nothing. Just a few veneer repairs back here that I already did. Next step is cloth and naphtha. Naphtha, the cleaning agent that will get rid of everything in oh. the cracks and crevices. Of course, you've dusted that off. Yes. You always have to dust off first. This is the most important part. I can't stress it enough. Every time you do a project, have a cocktail waiting. The prep time is the most important thing. And it often takes more time than anything else. After the naphtha, you want to use a tack rag. Hedy Lamar, do you oh, have yeah. donuts? <laughs> <laughs> I learned this one from Blackstone, look. The tack rag, which is the last thing. We are tack ragging. Remember, don't... Uh, shove the tack rag down, squish it on the front. Because well, you just want to rub lightly, that's yeah, all. Yeah, the tackiness that's all you have will to do. come out. You don't want that. 
when it's paint making time down south, my feet get all strange colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a flat black. Flat and black. Flat black oil paint. Now to that we'll add some burnt umber, or is that raw umber? This is raw umber. It's an umber of some kind. See, raw umber and burnt umber are both earth colors. Mm -hmm. But this has more yellow ochre in it, which gives it a kind of a brown, greenish look. And it is a Japan color. When you use that, it will always dry real flat and dull. So very often, you will use the next can to the left, which is a varnish, yeah. which will gloss it up. Well, that's going to gloss this paint up. It's not, we're not going to use this as a top coat. We're going to top coat after. Okay. We're going to add all of this stuff together. And some Japan dryer right here. And this is uh eye drops no this is actually silicone is what it is this is called fish eye flow out what this does is it kills any kind of fish eye infection which comes from uh waxes fish eyes. and polishes that remain on the wood even after you strip and you when you apply your paint or your varnish you may see that it's puckered so you add a few drops of this to however much paint if you make a gallon of paint you would add like 10 drops of this and mix it up and then the, the, and, the, and that way the paint or the varnish will have time to flow out and it won't pucker. Now You might need some paint thinner for this. Yeah, but I don't need that now. I'm going to have a jar right we're here. We're going to mix some black. One, two, three, four, five. This is the directions for the, for the recipe for the Nagoro Nori. Because it's not really a black. And in sunlight, it has a real beautiful color. Now we mix this up. So it's not exactly black anymore. It's like a really, really yeah. dark brown or a light black. Well, the thing is, you really can't tell. Black is black. I want my baby back. But, but in bright sunlight, especially, I've done this finish several times. It's got like a licorice color. Now we put in varnish. Which is a lovely amber color. Mix the varnish into there. The varnish, what that does is it makes the paint flow out a lot easier. And then we'll put in a little bit of Japan dryer. Tiny. Tiny. That's all you need. Less than that. That's all you need. Now I want to put in a little bit a little of paint. A little bit of stuff. paint thinner. What we're making, in essence, is an Alaskan polar bear heater, aren't we? Very mm. famous drink. What'll it be? Mm. Now some bitters. No, we're going to put in some silicone infection. Anti-silicone infection. Right. Here it goes. One. Two. A small atomic explosion. Three. Four. That's it. That's enough. Now we'll mix this up. When we come back, we'll be painting on the black. So don't go away. Jack. Dillinger, Capone, and Bonnie and Clyde. Friday night beginning at 8 on TLC. You can project light in any direction. But unless it's focused... You can't see clearly. That's why Infinity employed special projector beam headlights for the J30, to safely focus light where you need it. The J also has dual airbags, ABS, and seatbelt pretensioners, but you're less likely to need them if you see the light. Fresh and bright, new sight, Teflon is my new sight. Gives walls fight day and night. Lucite. For a beautiful finish that cleans up easily and lasts a long time, get Lucite products with Teflon. Lucite, it's one tough paint. Feels so right. Lucite looks so right. Lucite, Teflon is fight always right. Welcome sight, Lucite. All new height, Lucite. For a finish that won't quit, Lucite's right. Wines this good must be guarded with care. That's why Franzia comes in an airtight pouch that protects the fresh taste to the last glass. Maybe that's why it's America's favorite wine. Welcome to Thomasville, where this Memorial Day you'll find elegance and timeless craftsmanship at once-in-a-lifetime prices. The Thomasville Memorial Day Sale. Extraordinary furniture, extraordinarily priced. Call now for details, because after May 27th, this sale will only be a beautiful memory. Thomasville. Make yourself at home. When it comes to lawn and garden products, we're making a name for ourselves. Because we guarantee they're built tough from the ground up. That's Ace. 
the name to know for lawn and garden. Saturday. It's a wall of water. And what makes Milo fly? Peak performance, Saturday at 10 on TLC. Get ready for how-to advice from the ground up on the Renovation Guide. Coming up next, then double your knowledge, double your fun with back-to-back -back episodes of Home Time. It's all next right here on TLC. Well, I've taped the drawers here on the sides and I'm going to do my edge first. Tape the sides, obviously, so I don't get any paint on there. Now, you got to remember, with this paint and the red paint and the varnish, there's going to be about, oh, I'd say eight coats in all. So any kind of grain that remains or that's there now will be completely filled in. As you can see, if you look at the drawer fronts, these holes here are where the hardware was. Um, so the paint does not drip through. What and have you done? Stain your dainty under things is I've put masking tape on the inside of the drawer under those holes. Now, I'm br brushing lengthwise all the way across. The, the next coat of uh, black that we put on, I'm going to go perpendicular to this stroke. I'm going to create these hatch marks. One uh, with the grain, one perpendicular to the grain, and the final one with the grain again. Why? <laughs> Something else to do. Now, actually, the theory is that the paint adheres better that way when it dries. All right, we're sanding down the first coat that we applied. Lightly sand see this? with finishing paper. Can you see that? Those are the brush marks. Oh. You want to sand lightly. Don't break through. And this is a 280 uh, wet and dry paper, finishing paper. After you sand, you brush off the dust because we're preparing it for coat number two. So to sum up, we put on four coats of black. We put, after the second coat, we put a sealer coat of the shellac. And after the fourth coat, we put a sealer coat of shellac. Uh, now, next time, what we'll do is we'll buff this down, and then we'll lay on the first coat of red, follow that up with, uh, up with the second coat of red, and then we'll be varnishing. But right now, I want to get to the dividing screens because we're going to finish up putting the highlights on that so it looks like real aged bronze. So I'll see you at the screens. We're going surfing. Surf's up. We've divided the dividing screens. And now we will conquer the dividing screens. If you look closely, the dividing screens are sort of a nouveau effect. The uh, sinuous plant-like plate here. Attached by some escutcheon pins. Looks like a frond. Well, and it, with fronds like these, who needs anemones? Right. It designates or denotes that this is a nouveau piece, whereas the vanity is a deco piece. But don't worry. The style police won't break in and say, one deco. One you got row. you got two different pieces of furniture in there. You're going to go uh, sentenced to a year of wearing a Nehru jacket and don't, plaid pants. Don't worry, uh, style mixing is now decriminalized in most states. I'll probably just give you a parking ticket or a slap in the knee. What we're going to do with these is we're going to do an oxidized finish, which resembles oxidized bronze. And oxidi oxidation takes place over a period of time on bronze, brass, or copper. And you can do that finish with oil paints using a bronze base and some turquoise colors that, act, that actually mimics the, uh, that uh, effect. And we'll also replace the fabric with a lovely sort of an oriental looking, Asian looking type fabric. And this fabric is only in here with a little bit of contact adhesive and it's pushed into the, into the little crack here. So first thing we do is take off the fabric. We're gonna pull that off and then... Now that wasn't hard, was it? Remember, like the vanity, we are not going to strip the wood. 
because stripping is the most disgusting and time-consuming part, and if you don't have to do it, why do it? And with a lot of finishes, especially painted finishes, you can work with the existing finish or the existing paint. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this, really. It's in good condition. So all you have to do is sand it down, put a new primer on it, and then you can begin. And we've got some 100-grit garnet paper, and we're just going to sand, begin sanding lightly, just to rough it up a little bit. We are ready for the oxidation process. Who's Max do? But first, we've got to lay down the bronze foundation, and we're going to mix a bronze paint, make a bronze paint. We're actually making paint. Out of a clear varnish. Who did we get that bronze uh, powder from? This, I got five gallons of it from George Hamilton and an overstock supply. This is a clear semi-gloss furniture varnish, and I'm going to mix it with some of this uh, bronze powder. It's real bronze powder. Oh, first. When using any kind of metallic dust-like substance. Or any kind of dust. Put on a dust mask so you don't breathe it and but smell it. But especially like this. You'll smell a statue all day. The, the taste of metal will be in your mouth. So we'll pour the dust. We've been make, making a lot of paint lately, aren't we? Yeah. You don't have to be neat. You want to create some kind of texture. Because once this dries, why don't you put a little paint on that brush? <laughs> My God. You hey. paint the side of a house or a screen. Did I, did I get mad at you when you cut the springs wrong? Yeah. No, I'm not on camera. Uh -huh. Next, we're going to make the dividing screens look like an old statue. In places where people need an air conditioner that lasts a long, long, long time, they know... Okay, kid, run up and see if anybody's home. It's hard to stop a train. The impossible is now possible. From the makers of Krylon comes the next revolution in painting. Latex enamel in a spray. A vivid array of color. The ease of a spray with low odor and easy cleanup. The beautiful, long-lasting finish of enamel. Introducing new Krylon Living Color. Latex enamel in a spray. The next revolution in painting. Victims of foul play and unspeakable offense, tortured spirits reach from the grave to haunt the living. Do you believe Castle Ghosts of England, Sunday night at 10, on TLC. Get ready for how-to advice from the ground up on the Renovation Guide. Coming up next. Then, double your knowledge, double your fun with back-to-back -back episodes of Home Time. It's all next right here on TLC. Attention homeowners. Coming your way now. Special savings on Sears Durable Chain Link Fencing. Help make your yard safe and secure while you enjoy special savings from Sears of 50% on selected chain link fence fabric with the installation of an exclusive Sears Armadillo 10 fence system. Call this number now for your free in-home estimate. Save 50% on selected lines of chain link fence fabric. Heavy duty chain link fencing available in your choice of heights. This is a limited time offer so be sure to call Sears today. Enjoy greater privacy and peace of mind. Have Sears install a chain link fence now. Get your free in-home estimate. And get satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. For installed roofing, gutters, doors, and fencing, call this 800 number right now. Improving your life by improving your home. Now it's time for oxidation. We've let the bronze color dry overnight on our dividing screens. And now we, we're going to dab on oxidized highlights. That's right. And we mixed the bronze powder with the liquid medium being varnish. Like Romp is a medium, right? <laughs> but he's not too liquid, though, unless he's in a pool. Some people buy anything. <laughs> and speaking of buying anything, 
Listen to this concept. Show them the Well, colors. it's a faux bronze. Mm -hmm. It's a faux oxidation. False. It's done with painted, uh, with oil paint to simulate what oxidation really looks like on a bronze piece. And there are three colors. And there are three colors. They're oil paint, they're semi-gloss, you got a light turquoise, you got a medium turquoise, and a dark green, which is kind of the color of bronze as it does begin to get weathered and oxidized. We have some supplies here. We have abrasive pads that we're going to be dabbing into the paint to create a texture. You had some cheap throwaway brushes that are good because they're good for dabbing also in this fashion. You've got a sponge that creates nice texture. And these foam brushes, that can, they can be cut into pointed bits. That's a toothpick if you're very sensitive. That you can get into uh, cracks. The roller. We're going to use a roller for flat surfaces and use the, the Chinese bristle brush, of course, for applying the paint. And the first paint we want to apply is this dark green paint, because that's the base coat over top of the bronze. Remember. Sometimes you might want to have a piece of oxidized metal right in front of you so you know what you're uh, going for, maybe a picture out of a book. That's why we have this. It's got all the same colors. I put this in front of the... Uh... <laughs> now it looks like a Buick. Well, now we're going to have a ceremony. We can light a candle. Let's go. Now let's take the paint. I'm going to watch him, and then he's going to show me. And you have your buckets behind you, so I'll show you. We're just going to take some paint here. Yeah, the dark paint first. Now when you drag it across, you don't want to cover it all up. You want to leave it in patches, creating a patchwork. So leaving, you're leaving some areas bronzed, mm -hmm. correct? And then you're hitting it with the roller. Yeah. Oh. So you see, your idea is to throw it all together. So it's not necessary to lay all the dark green down at once and then the lighter green. No. And no. then the lightest. You can work all three colors at all the same time. All three colors at the same side as long as you don't wind up you know, turning them all into mud. You want to make all the three colors visible. So after you brush down the base coat, you don't necessarily want to brush hard again. No. You stop. So you know, I'm tired of being in this area. So you're moving on. So I'm going to move on. Because Picasso said, when you work on a painting, never stay in one area more than two minutes. But one color is all right. Yeah. So you know, now I actually when we come back... I have a picture of, uh, of a paint store in Barcelona in 1903. It says, big sale, just blue. Just blue. I think we've cracked that code. Uh, well, once this is dried, we'll come back with some more of the bronze and then dab on some bronze highlights over top of this. So then it'll be peeking through. And you want to, the paint is almost raised on here. And the more bubbles, the better. The more pitting, the better. Do you want to help me with my technique, yeah, though? Yeah, I'll help you. Get uh, behind me see. like a golf you pro, got, not got, really. You got some of the dark paint. I got the dark green, okay. so I'm just going to brush this on. Don't put too much on there now. Just dab it around. Let's get inside these cracks here. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. It doesn't mean, it's not necessary for the paint to be all even. You can have some right. paint thicker and some paint thinner. See that? Texture in there is good. Look, you painted my finger. Now I'll do right here. Okay. <laughs> the slapstick portion of the, the wha show. Wha wacky slapstick. Okay. Okay, I think that's about enough. What's happening up there? See this? Where? See this here? That's what you want. Look what you got there. Okay. So here. you want more vivid? More vivid. That's it. And you know how you get more vivid? You don't more paint. You don't keep dabbing. I see. That see what you're painting and then leave it go. We waited for this to dry, this first coat. And now going over with some highlights. We're putting on a little bit of the darker color on the darker green. I don't want it to look totally oxidized. That's what it looks like now. In conjunction with the dark green here, we're also going to put on some bright, brilliant bronze, new bronze. I, I envision a new business card for us, highlights by lowlifes. See, now I'm using this rag 
to tamp the paint off because I don't want it really thick in all spots. I want it to, to gather thick in the corners. But I don't want to obliterate all the nice light blue that we got in there, that turquoise color. So when you 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 putting the uh, the bronze on with the uh, with the abrasive pad as well? Yes. Now the good thing is if you don't like the effect, you don't like what it looks like, you can just go right over it, just dab the green on. But I kind of like what's going on there, and it's going to take a while to get around all the screens. But if you just remember to model all of the paint together so that it looks like unified in a sloppy kind of way. You don't want it, to, you don't want everything, you could make a point like that. Carefully, sloppily, yeah. roundly. Well, see how I'm making, if I, if I press down on this pad, I'm making like a little pyramid there. It's got a sharp edge. Well, you don't want to see that on the piece, so you got to model it together. Or you might want to twist it a little bit as you apply. Well, you don't want to twist because then you'll, you'll have more of a soft effect. Like a spiral, like a Van Gogh sun. Like a Van Gogh sun? Yeah, I thought he, he didn't ever even married. See that? You don't want that. So you want a dab. What do you think of this, Joe? Hey, that's coming out good. Thanks. But but now get some of the other, uh, your other, the, your the darker dark green, color. Dark color behind down here? You there. Yeah. Finishing with the highlights. Oh, yes, we are. Next time, we'll put on the fabric and finish the vanity as well. And we're going to finish this. Yeah, we're going we'll to put the fabric inside these panels. we got a nice, pretty black fabric. That's right. Until then, I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorario. Be, Be nice, nice to your furniture. Your screens, too. And you know, my mother got the lead in Taxi Driver, too. You talking to me? What? You, t you talking to me? What? You talking to me? She'll like that one. I think she'll be good. <laughs>